Hey everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your archer. And today I'm going to show you how to paint a red ornate seahorse underwater with rippling light on the seafloor. So a lot of techniques, a lot of acrylic information. I'm going to show you every color mix, every technique, every tool, everything you need to know and see. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He is going to help us do this lesson by telling fun jokes and facing the camera at the techniques that I'm talking about. Making sure that you can see what I am demonstrating because what you can see, you can duplicate. And the whole point of this lesson is for you to be able to paint this for yourself at home. Mm -hmm. If you're here for Acrylic April, woo, we're still in it. Congratulations. You are doing so good. This is our last week. So that's very exciting. If you just came in because you were like, I want to paint a seahorse, this is the right lesson. It is entirely explained here. You don't have to be able to draw. You don't have to know anything. If you check the description below, there's a link to our website. On the website is a free traceable, a grid reference, a printoutable painting reference, a traceable, and a mini book where the instructions are written out step by step for you to follow along. This video is time stamped and chapter marked. So you can relocate yourself in the painting again uh, easily with no difficulty. Mm hmm. And that's important because sometimes you don't remember where you were. You can go back and find a thing. You feel like, where was she dotting again? Then you can be like, oh, she was dotting there because it'll be labeled out for you. Everything you really need as a beginner is here. So really all you've got to do is get the art materials that you have. You can check the description below for the exact material materials that I'm using today. And get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at your easel right now. I'm going to show you how to paint the seahorse. For today's lesson, we're going to be using an 8x8 eight eight stretched canvas. I have on it with watercolor pencil the word or intention for you guys painting at home that you find your creative voice and use it often. Over here in materials, I have cad red medium, quinacridone magenta, thalo blue, thalo green, cad red medium, mars black, titanium white. An extra interesting media that I will probably use is the titanium white fluid acrylic. That's a high flow acrylic. You could use like any bottle paint if you don't want to get this exact kind. And I'm also using the gloss glazing liquid. We're going to use this to create a little bit of deep water effect. You guys are going to love this technique. So really, as long as you have those things and a happy go lucky attitude, I think you're ready to do the paint. You could also have any attitude you want. I'm not here to tell you how to feel. <laughs> Just, you know, like be ready to do it. I'm ready. We, we, can, we can do step one, which is the easiest of steps. Step one is really easy. We're going to paint the whole canvas with an aqua ocean color, which is really just phthalo blue and phthalo green together with titanium white. That's how you get to the phthalo turquoise. And we're going to just paint the whole surface with this very aqua color. It doesn't need to be neat and tidy either. Mm -mm. It can be messy. We have, we have glazing to do. This is the seahorse arena. The seahorse arena. Actually, this would be a scary place. I got one a little, like a little bit blue there. And it's a scary place for a seahorse to be. It's pretty open ocean. You're not really like open ocean critters. Seahorses made a mistake. Well, you know, they seem to be doing okay. They're working it out. They're clinging to things. They're clinging to things. They're holding on. I like their family relationships. Dads carry the babies. Yeah. That's a, that's a thing I like about seahorses having done three kids naturally. Uh, <laughs> myself. I think I would have liked to kick some of that over to you. Sure. I there was some regret. There were some moments where I questioned my judgment. <laughs> <laughs> so every time I see seahorses and they're like, I'm the duds carry the young. I'm like, oh, seahorses. Mm -hmm. They are so clever. So I'm just painting everything green. It's like this. aqua. It's not really green. It's an aqua color. I find it's a little more biased to the phthalo green than the phthalo blue. And it's about a mid range of dark. It's the least favorite color for the camera to see. It's the camera's really hates this color. Actually, it doesn't do too bad anymore. Yeah, it used to just really it, like, yeah. it used to be like, I don't know what that color is. It was like, no. Pick another color. So we're going to dry this 
first step, which you have succeeded. Pat yourself on the back. You did the first step of the painting. So, John. Yes. Would you like to know a seahorse fact? What? What, what fact do you have for me? Seahorses swim in pairs, and they like swim with their little tails holding each other. Aw. Isn't that cute? That is cute. Do you have any seahorse facts? Well, I know that there's already over 40 species of them. That's a lot of horse in the sea. It's a lot of different horses. So, of course, seahorse is not a horse. It's a fish. It's a fish. It's a bony <laughs> fish. It's a bony fish. Let's try our canvas, and I'll see you guys back in a minute. So for this stage, I'm going to use a chalk pencil. So this is a pencil made of chalk. You could use kids chalk for chalkboard. I'm using this to sketch on my canvas. If you don't feel like drawing, don't worry. You check that description below. There really is a traceable. It's just free. Just go get it and download it and use the video on how to use a traceable. And you can get this on your canvas. It's like a little stencil. It's like no problem for you. But if you want to draw, I will show you how you can draw a seahorse if you wanted to. So I'm look at my uh, seahorse, and I know that we've got this sort of very long little face that comes over here. Actually, let me, if you think this is the center of the canvas, and you can use the grid reference, too, if you're trying to see the, the placement of this. I like to bring this line here. I've got to leave room for fins and weirdness all around here. So I kind of bring the gesture around like this, just so I know where I'm going is a thing that I do. His little head's a lot of fun. He's got a bit of a bony, bony brow. And then a little teeny tiny snout. It's like they, they call them horses because, you know, this head thing looks like a horse. Uh-huh. But again, as we said earlier, it's not a horse. It looks a little horsey. It has a bit of a horsey look to it for sure. Now I'm going to bring the neck in here. And they have these cute little bellies. I'm going to add a little belly circle here to make sure that my seahorse is fat. Didn't you get priggers? Mm -hmm. so I'm going to bring that neck. So it'll curve in out to the belly then a big curve in. And I might actually curl the tail even more as I do it. But more first curl. I want to make sure that I get a nice arced little back here. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of comes in. And that there we go. So that's their little S-shaped body. Weird little S-shaped body that these guys have. They are fun to draw. If you're looking for one, you're like, I'm ready to try to draw, but I, I'm not sure which one I want to try to draw. Mm -hmm. This isn't a terrible one to try to draw. I like to begin curled things, dragon tails, seahorse tails from the curl and come back. And I choose that location because that's where I get the most control. I have control over the curl. So if I want to come here and say, come on the inside, I can do that. What's great is they have these weird little uh, fruity bits that are going to come off like that. Yeah. So on the drawing, what's wonderful is that, you know, once we adjust here and capture what we want, and then there's, there's these fun little fins. The fins on these little creatures is a... Uh, Kind of a, just really funny. I think it's actually even lower. <laughs> Very ineffective. There we go. Little, little swimmy bit. It's the swimmy bit. Swimmy bits are ridiculous. <laughs> Those are the, that's the go fast one. Well, what, how, how fast do they beat a second? I don't think they're very fast. Oh, I don't know. They, they, those little, the little ones on the back beat fast. Like 35 beats per second, right? It's way like more the than The hummingbird like, of the like, sea. Yeah. It's like very, very fast. Like, I'm the hummingbird of the sea. SpongeBob seahorse. They had seahorses in SpongeBob all the time. I think that they're a sea trope. <laughs> Got a little eye here. I'll we'll make sure that this is sort of exaggerated. I like to just sort of check the lines because these are a very gestural creature. Mm -hmm. And I think what it is is that I keep I I I keep adjusting for horse instead of uh, seahorse. 
So instead oh. of that's what it is, is I keep adjusting for horse. So you make horse adjustments. I make horse adjustment instead of seahorse adjustment. So I've got to adjust for seahorse, which now I just hit the adjustment for seahorse. If you're a person who's drawn horses and that's happening to you, that just <laughs> happened to me. Very normal, natural thing. This is what we're going to do. So you're either going to use the gridding method to get this on here, which you can just work from my worked out sketch or use the transfer method or follow along and sketch out your own seahorse. It's entirely up to you. You could grab your little cell phone and pick a different seahorse. I won't be offended. The techniques will still apply. All right, let's get a picture of this and I'll leave you with this. So they're little fins, uh -huh. right? Go 35, 35 beats per second. But in their little side fins sort of steers, they're like really ineffective swimmers. And they can get they can't be out in the open because they get too exhausted. They just yeah, they just blown away by the currents. They really need the seagrass. So again, keep in mind, let's just imagine just on this side of the camera is a whole grove of seagrass that the seahorse has just wandered away from and we just don't see it in the picture. It's very safe. It's very safe. That's the seahorse's reality. Come back and we'll uh paint in more of the painting. <laughs> So in this step, we're going to kind of put in the background and the seascape. And I am going to kind of let myself know where things get a little bit darker off in the distance. I'm going to take my T-square. We won't actually have a hard line like a horizon in the ocean, but knowing where it gets deeper and kind of the vanishing point is under the water is super important. I'm going to take my brush and a little bit of my phthalo blue and green. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come above my little seahorse, Duder. And I am going to paint this much bluer. Kind of aqua that's up here, deeper, darker. I want to make sure it's very covered, though. Yeah. It's smooth and far away. I'm using a number eight cat's tongue and that's just, you know, for control and blending and all the techniques I'm doing, but you could do this with a bright or a round or just really anything. Now, as I come forward, I definitely want to be more in my aqua. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get my blue into my green and my titanium white, really pulling my aqua color. And we're going to blend these two. See how we're blending these two right here? Yeah, is this a wet into wet blend? This is a wet into wet blend. So the layer above is wet and the paint that I'm painting into it is wet. So I kind of have that distant hard horizon, but now I may have to use, you know, something more articulate for around the seahorse as I go. If I can't get around him nicely. Uh -huh. I don't want to lose my drawing. I'm just getting that second coat of paint on. Mm. With a little bit of an ombre. Yeah. Sometimes you need an ombre. And we're going to get even another water distant gla with the glazing medium later. So you guys are great here. I like Going forward. I can go lighter. The sea foam is always such a nice color. Yeah, but this isn't seafoam. There will be no seafoam. There's no seafoam I mean, under the water. I know, but it's that seafoam green color. Ah, it's the sea. Yeah, it is seafoam green. That's what I meant. Not like it's seafoam. I just but, was worried that you thought we were going to have seafoam in the water. I'm like, no. This would, it could maybe, if there was a wave rolling up here, you could push a wave down from the ceiling and make that happen. I do want to kind of go back and forth. And improve the blending. I don't want to take out my whole seahorse. But I know where he is well enough to paint him in later when I'm painting. Yeah. I do I do know where he is. While everything's still sort of wet. Um, actually, let's take a picture, but try to come back where this is still wet. You guys will just have a step. But we're going to grab a picture. We'll call this is the, the okay. step. And then when we come back, we're going to put in a little modeling.
This is still fairly wet, and the technique will work even if it's not, but I, I was preferentially hoping it would be. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pull out a little bit of my white and some of my yellow, and I'm going to make a very, like, warm seafoam green, but it's not foam, <laughs> right? Yeah. And we're going to come from this far distance, and I've got to make some light lines. Oh, yeah. So there's these lights, this sort of lacing that happens underwater. Or the, yeah, the, like there's just stuff in the water that deflects the light and makes it look all kind of cool. It's like a veining. And it's super fun to paint. It just takes a, a some thoughtfulness. Anywhere that the light is thick, you want to kind of thicken the line like this. It's like the light is diffused. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to just start painting that in there. You can bring some little, like, little flails out. Mm -hmm. This is kind of weird. We haven't done this on the channel before. Feather that out just a little bit if I need to. I may put my glazing liquid on here so I can go transparent easily. And how much of that do you use? Um, I put out probably much more than I need. Yeah? Yeah, I would think so. Just making sure that I've got... Lots of transparency where I need it. But some of these lines are very fine. And some are very bright. And it takes a minute to get all the veining in there. Yeah. That underwater lace. Underwater lacing of light. That's a good way of thinking of it. And it it's different every time. There aren't like hard and fast rules that I can give you mm-hmm. per se. Other than um, really spend some time like looking at, at the way light reflects through pool. Uh, the beach sand under the ocean, I'm going through the seahorse, is going to be blue. Everything kind of has that cast mm-hmm. under the ocean. Galveston tends to have a brown cast to everything. Yeah, this not this this is this is definitely warmer temperate waters here. I, yeah, I don't think seahorses are in the Galveston area. If they are, they they're a hardy seahorse. <laughs> Much harder here than than I would have expected. It is unnerving at first to do this. Don't let it throw you off. Huh. The dwarf seahorse is the third smallest seahorse species in the world, and it's found in the grass beds of the Gulf of Mexico. Well, what's the smallest seahorse then? I don't know. You would think that they would call the dwarf seahorse, the, that would be the smallest seahorse, but Okay. That would be pygmy seahorse which is even smaller it's a little tiny I wonder if some of these are going to get new names (laughs) I don't know I don't know I do like teeny tiny animals. There's it's teeny tiny. I like when things are small. I think I've seen uh, the really small seahorses in an aquarium. So we're just beginning that process of lacing. Lacing actually takes a few a few passes because, believe it or not, there's you have to get the white spots, the hot spots, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, The different values of the light that get cast out here.
I like to break up the little bits of weird side light that come through. Mm -hmm. Just whenever you're doing something like this, you just, you know, get a reference, paint what you see. If you're not sure how to do it, you paint what you see. And then eventually through that process, what you see will start to look like what it is. And just art is observation first and foremost. Yeah. That's what you're doing is you're observing what you see. And then, you know, for me, it's trying to describe to you what we see in a way that you can duplicate it. You can see there's definitely a webbing component to under the water. Oh, yeah. Sometimes the light will get thicker. And so you've got to kind of paint those thicker areas of light. We haven't addressed any of the value of the light yet. How light or dark the light or dark is. In the distance, you don't see maybe as much of the patterning of the lace that you do up front as it comes closer to you. Right? It's maybe a little fainter and further away. And we'll come back and glaze here. Mm -hmm. to sort of create this depth. Once we get all the lacing painted in, we'll come back and glaze, and that will help push back some of these distant laces some. Oh. That'll create some of the atmospheric perspective underwater? Hopefully, yeah. And we do. Even when you're painting underwater, you're painting atmospheric perspective underwater. None of those things ever really change. We painted all kinds of different perspectives. This is just the one that we're painting right now. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Let's get a picture of it at this stage and then come back and put in some more detailing. So we're going to come in and add some detailing to this uh, webbing. I'm going to add some of my titanium white fluid and I'm going to pull it out. I do want maybe just a little tinting to it, but just barely any. And I'm going to come here and create hot spots in the light. Won't be everywhere. Yeah. Because it just isn't everywhere. Highlight. Yeah, you want to highlight some of the webbing. And even here, it creates that motion. You can really, what guess what we've been talking about in water, you can always tell where the light is. Where's the light? Mm -hmm. Top. The lighting down here tells us where the light is up top. We just want to make sure that we're catching these little hot spots of light that happen mm -hmm. along the webbing. Bed. Only thing that little seahorse is looking out for is lunch and other crabs. Lunch. Because that's right. Crabs eat them, right? Yep. So we just painted the one thing that eats their little boniness. <laughs> <laughs> it's the crab. Crabs eat everything. They're just taking care of business. Crabs? Yeah. Or seahorses? Crabs. They clean it up. Stuff. They, they seem like ocean Roombas is what they seem like to me. Crabs feel like ocean Roombas to me. Eh. So seahorses have to eat as we continue to web on. We're just looking for little hot spots to extenuate. Where we have more white and light in the in the lighting than you know maybe elsewhere. Um, they eat constantly throughout the day. They eat like 3,000 pounds of brine shrimp. Oh, wow. 
That's a lot of little brain shrimp. I bet brain shrimp do not think seahorses are at all cute. <laughs> I bet brain shrimps are like, no, that's not okay. Just making those little webs kind of outlined. And you just paint, you know, the different little aspects where some of it's stronger and some of it isn't. And that's the other important thing to realize is that, you know, you're painting different levels of it. You have light through the webbing. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've painted enough under pool scenes in the last few years. Underwater scenes? Uh, yeah, like, un but under the pool, like with the clear water where the light is broken, the way that it gets broken. Oh, yeah. Underwater. I don't think I've done enough of that lately. We need to get back to that. I like how that makes that underwater lace. It does a thing there. That'll just pop into place as soon as you start putting the the seahorse in. It, it Well, the seahorse helps give it context. I'm right. going to take a little of my white and my glazy medium. It can have a little bit of the blue in it. I do want to make sure that some of these are... It's kind of transparent, but I don't want it to be a lot of pigment. And that is a little hard to do with the titanium white because the titanium white is nothing if not a lot of pigment. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's thicker, too, up when it gets closer. Well, some of the light is refracted in a different way. It makes... Yeah, so you've got to kind of paint some of the ways that the light is refracted. You're painting what it is. The ways the light refracts. And then you have to decide, do you want to rainbow it or not? Because <laughs> you can. All right, let's call that a step and dry it. And when we come back, we're going to add a little glazing. So I'm going to take my number eight cat's tongue and I'm going to load it up with quite a lot of my glazing medium. And then I'm going to get a smidge of my blue and work that in here. We have a glaze of phthalo blue. Let's come back and forth and come down even over my seahorse with a glaze. Kind of see that pulling forward now? Oh, yeah. So I love that you can do that. You can create some definite atmosphere and water using glazing medium. And then you have what's coming forward, forward. Mm -hmm. You can keep making little hot spots. Oh, yeah. 
those are the bright parts of the reflection. Yeah. A little hot spot. That happen under the water. And they do happen. Let's put them around here and there. Just a few places of more of hot spots. Ah. And that's really where the light gets lensed down into the water. Mm hmm All right. Doesn't take a lot. Let's call that a step and we'll come back and start painting in our gorgeous seahorse. So we're going to start painting in our seahorse and I'm going to use my number four round just because that's a nice pointed round that I can begin with. I might, you know, if I had a lot of different rounds up the round size just to paint in his whole body, but we're working off of this set of brushes this year. Yeah. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to grab a little bit of my magenta and cad red, but really I'm just going to come over and get my little bricky color, which is my cad red and a little bit of black. It gets quite dark pretty quick. It looks like a brick. And we'll come here and start to paint in a little bit of Mr. Seahorse Dumb. Yes. He is beginning his journey into reality. He's beginning to look a lot like Seahorse. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, caroling. I never did it. Something that you didn't miss out on. No, you don't think so? Looks super fun. Oh, well, you know, you're now in Pennsylvania. You can go try it. No, I think that my Christmas gift, all my neighbors will be me not caroling. <laughs> that's, no, really, seriously. I think See, that's going to be my kindness to them. It's interesting because there's a theory that if you get enough people together who can't sing, it sounds good. This is called caroling. I think that you just started a fight with the whole demographic of YouTuber that I did not no, want no. to start a fight with. There's a whole group of people who can do it, but there's also. I think if you have a song cannot. in your heart, you should sing it. It's true. I agree. I just, I always <laughs> like started the, it with some singers. Oh, no, no. Well, like, cause there's, and there's, there's a, most of them know it. It's true. It's like, no, I can't sing and I'm going to stand in the back and belt it out. Cause Christmas is the only time you Christmas and karaoke. That's the two times you get to hear me sing. I love karaoke and carry and, and, and caroling is forced karaoke participation. So like when I was first with you, uh, your mom who can sing and your sister who can sing took me out to karaoke <laughs> <laughs> when they found out, I for sure cannot you sing. Cannot sing. <laughs> but did I stop? You, you, no, you I did four non blondes. I did not even care. See, you can sing. You just have to hunt for the notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a detective, like a sleuth and sleuth. I'm like Stabler. It's a crime when I sing. I do it anyways. And continue to go forth. So, like, in my family, we didn't really have anybody who was at all musical. So. But you seem to have some other artistic skills. Yeah, that was allowed. <laughs> <laughs> you can see I'm just kind of shaping in his little belly. And it's a dark red. I'm just taking my cat red. And my Mars black, I'm just coming around. I'm not putting in any of the detail quite yet. We yeah. just got to get this base coat on. It's his base coat. <laughs> Seahorse needs a base coat. Did you know Seahorse needs a base coat? I did. Seahorse I expected needs a he base need coat. Some under hoarseness.
You're just working on kind of a solid. Yeah, I'm just getting a line in form of him, and I'm getting him filled in. It's not real important that he be not, like, blotchy or anything, is it? He didn't have to be, like, a super solid color. I, I would get him as smooth of an initial color as you can, but it doesn't have to yeah. be at all perfect. Like, you know, mine is certainly not. Smoothish. Smoothish is sort of a good way to go. And as close as that as you can get without, like, fretting. Yeah, I'm going to bring a little bit up here. This so is right, sort of over to the little side behind, and then... Right as you're like, I'm about to fret, stop. <laughs> I like these first little antenna thingies, but I don't need to go much further than that. Because I've really got to let this dry. And then paint the next layer on. He's got his little two little, like, I'm a snail. He's fine. He'll be fine. Come back. I'll show you. So in this step, we're going to start adding in values, details, different hues that make up the seahorse. Things to be aware of, his face is in deep shadow, as is this area along his neck and tail. So some of the detailing is actually created only by the patterning. Areas out here, we've got lots of little weird filigree work and fussy bits, which is a lot of fun and will be good practice for your brush work. I did switch to a fresh cup of water, and I'm going to begin by taking my cad red over to my cad yellow. And getting some brighter oranges to paint with. All right. So we're going to come along his little back. And make some fiddly bits. There's some distant far side fiddly bits. And uh -huh. then there's uh, up close to him fiddly bits. We're doing some far side fiddly bits. The little spiky bits. Little spiky bits. They're very I like bony. the little spiky bits. They uh, this is so because their whole like uh, strategy for staying alive is to look like a plant. Is that the frilly bit? That's the frilly bit. Is him looking like whatever he's attached to most often? <laughs> I'm a plant, not an animal that you couldn't eat anyways. Because I'm almost entirely made of bones. Hmm. This is a lot of camouflage for something nobody but a crab wants to eat. Interesting that this type of camouflage totally works on crabs, though. Like, that part is kind of fascinating to me. I'm just continuing to mix, you know, yellow into the red over here. That crabs can be fooled by fiddly bits. Some fiddly bits. They make them look like they're the seaweed. Yeah, they're like, I'm a plant. You don't see me. I'm a plant. And come through here around the top and curve that line. And then I can go into my cad red and even my magenta. Sort of blend here. Isn't that fun? Yeah. I love the cad red and the magenta. They're a good color combo. Now maybe just a little more red. Mm. We're just starting to put some values in. The layers some of colors. Values. Layers of colors. These little guys are, are very colorful. Lots of fun. I like the how the tones start to give him shape. And he needs the shape. He's a very shapely creature. I'm going to go ahead and put in some little fin work back here. Fin work, fin work, little frilly fin work. <laughs> Maybe get a little white into it even. Makes them look like grasses. He's trying real hard. Don't look at me. I'm not here. 
I'm going to brush this back into him. I let it be a little transparent. I let it be a little dry brush. Just a little bit. And I'll come back with a little orange this alternate direction. Brush a little white back in. Not too bad. Take a little bit of a, of this little light color up here. I'm going to brush it along uh -huh. some of the spots. If you're having trouble getting brush out, you can go into your fluid. Just at the tail here. Tails look nice. That's what you got his grippy parts. His grippies. Get a little more orange. And let's continue with some fiddly bits. Yeah. Who's got fiddly bits? This little dude does. This little duder got so many fiddly bits. Now we don't see every little fit, far side fiddly bit. We just see some of them. So it doesn't hurt to come through and kind of put them in. Mm -hmm. We will see every one of the close fiddly bits. We just won't see every one of the far fiddly bits. And I'm going to just make John crazy by coming up top. <laughs> just as I adjusted down for the bottom one. That's okay. Because that's what you got to get the fiddly bits. You got to be fiddly. You got to get the fiddly bits be fiddling. I'm going to go ahead and grab my red and my black again. Making that kind of very dark red. Kind of really show him right here. Sure. So dark through the belly. Yeah. And the belly far side should have some bumps. Because they're bony. As mentioned in the previous part of the video. They are. They're little bony guys. They're little bony dudes that nobody wants to eat. They're super hidey. They need to be afraid of its current. Sometimes you'll see me going in and getting like a refresher. Yeah. Other little things while we're here, let's make sure that we do some of these little ripples. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because I got some of these. He's got some cool stripies. Well, they're not really stripes as much as they will be shadows, but you got to get them in now or you won't get them at all. Well, that's not true. You can always get something in acrylic paint. <laughs> that was a lot more dire than acrylic paint ever is. Yeah. But it's nice to get them at this stage. He's a nice little break of stuff to paint. Like we learned a little bit of a water technique for sure. And this, this program is about water and landscape, but. You know, we can still paint a seahorse or two. Yeah. Let's call this a step and we'll come back and continue to add detail. So 
So as we go forward, we have to continue to help define some of his shape and everything that's going on with him. I'm going to take my cad red and magenta, and I may even add some yellow into it. It's just a little different than everything else, and that will help us. And we're going to come here and scoop some of this little bit here. It's coming on this side. These little little scoopers scoopers. Uh-huh. Scoopers. Have you scooped your scoopers? I don't know. I don't know you like that. Maybe you did, maybe didn't. I like them. Uh, scoop your scoopers. Come across here. We're just trying to play with the texture. He's incredible texture. He's very textured. Uh -huh. And I'm turning him just so I can pay more attention to the texture than really any other thing that I'm doing. Yeah. Ooh. Got a lot of it. Wow. He's getting some, getting some texture now. So I'm going to take a little, again, my cad red and my magenta and quite a lot of my cad yellow. And even a little bit of my titanium white gives me kind of a coral. Mm -hmm. Gonna keep rolling and staying on my toe. That's getting some of those color pops in there. And some of his little camouflage, right? He's like worked very hard on this camouflage. Yeah. We should work very hard on duplicating it. And that is the magenta and the cad red and a little white. You can always get more yellow in it or different colors in it if you need to. I like his tiger stripes a lot. Well, the ribbies, but we'll make them. We'll 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 define them more as that I as we go. Yeah, they're they're not so much stripes as ribs. I'm just saying that because I don't want to confuse people at home, thinking that they're doing stripes. Right. There is little bony ribs. They're little bony ribs. They are quite dark, and there will be patterning and striping in it. That we have to consider. I'm going to add little bits of orange and yellow as I come through here. You can come in and get little bits of magenta. You want to kind of model it. And uh, I'm going to make it a little uneven. Let's just keep making little spiky spikes. Lots of little spiky spikes coming off of him. Oh, yeah. Makes him look very underwater foresty. And that's what he's trying to do. He is trying to look like an underwater forest. He's trying to look that way. No, I'm not going all the way out on him because we've got to come back with a monogram liner and some white, which we'll be doing in a sec sec here. Uh huh. 
We're just making sure that we're pulling some of this in. Let you kind of flash down and model out some of his uh, different colors. Oh, yeah. That come through and get into the oranges. It's really not. I just want to make sure that I'm randomizing some of what. We're seeing. Yeah. I rinse out every once in a while. Wow, he looks cool. He is cool, man. He's a super cool little duder. Another little duder. The week of duders. <laughs> and then go around like that. Now I'm going to rinse out. And I do want to get into my number one monogram liner. And I'm going to grab some of my uh, red color and take it to my fluid paint. And you can get even yellow into it. Oh. Bringing some of that in there. I may need, I'm going to turn my seahorse, and I know that's disorienting yeah, no, for that's you guys, right. but I want to be able to really see these little spikes and be able to paint them out. There's just so much like little coral bits of him that are coming out around. Uh huh. His little corally forest. His little corally forestness may come and tap across his little fin here with a little bit of that. A little bit of highlighting along his little ribs and fins and things. And this is a little, you know, it is detail-oriented work. There is some detail-oriented work when doing a seahorse. Even if you're painting him loosely, you've still got some detail you've got to get into because they're detailed creatures. They uh, work very hard on their camouflage, and you've got to capture some of those elements. We want to make sure that we get a lot of that going on out there. Oh, that looks so cool. Kind of highlighting some of the scoops and things. Now, while I've got this here, I'm going to take a little bit of my white into this. I'll go ahead and get some yellow, uh -huh. kind of warm it up and load it up. And we're going to talk a bit about oh yeah, some places there that are happening. There are some bumps that go along here. Just coming along with my little number one monogram liner. Just trimming him up. Well, he's got like these little these little lumps and we'll we'll add some shadows back in to help them to be defined as those. Uh-huh. But there's definitely some of that going on. As it goes forward, it could go more into the red.
He's got a lot of shape now. He's starting to get it. Adding little bits of defined ripples. And then we have to start kind of giving a place for some of the straight patterning that he has. Yeah. Across here. It won't really come into being until um, we add the white. But that's the beginning there. And then kind of around here, we've got some really interesting patterning. Yeah. That, again, we'll see much better when... Uh, We add the white dot, adding a little bit of that kind of peach patterning here. Definitely want it to be peach so that the white shows. Oh, yeah. There we go. Wow. No, we're just adding the peach where we know that there's some coloring. Let's call that a step and we'll come back and continue to add details to develop the seahorse. So I'm going to get back into my number four round for a little bit, uh, and I'm going to mix my cad red into my twin magenta. And I'm going to come here and kind of speak to some of the more sculptural nature of his shape. Pulling those colors through. And I can always get back into the black. Yeah. And red. And blend these in. Because they're very, uh, these creatures are very bony. Yeah. And that boning creates quite a lot of, of shape and form to them. Makes them very not edible. Makes them very not edible. They are not edible. We want to bring some of that shading through the the bumples. I want to take some of my cat red. And make sure that even there, you know, you kind of really get the sense of those ripples. Yeah. You can really see how they make little ribs there. Yeah. Pull those in. And come back and put some kind of deeper, darker values through here. Mm -hmm. We'll rinse out. And I'm going to get into some yellow red.
Maybe even a little more yellow, a bit orange. Just these little highlights and low lights coming through there. Don't feel bad about bringing colors through him. He worked very hard on being a colorful little creature. Ate many, 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 many little krill to get those colors. He did eat many, many little krill, like like 3,000 brain shrimp a day. So many brain shrimp. I guess I could eat 3,000 potato chips a day. He's you know. a krill machine. He's a krill machine. I'm just a krill machine. Really weird and silly. I'm gonna take a little bit of my black here. I'll play a little bit with the, the little fin there. Mm -hmm. And also there's a little the dots that come through here. I see a few little dots, camouflagey dots, like they do. Uh-huh. Going to take little curved black strokes. And the last little bit where we do the white patterning is what is going to reveal him as the seahorse he is. Mm -hmm. The thing to realize about their eyes is that their eyes are here, but they are camouflaged in the head and the dots go across even the eye. So you barely see it. Oh, yeah. And it is camouflaged in. It doesn't have like uh, the kind of like normal eye thing that we do. I'm just making sure the bumples of the. Oh, yeah. And I think the reason that it's non specific, I'm going to grab some red here to some degree. Uh huh. is because um, they don't need a predator having an idea too much where it is. Uh-huh. So I've got it in that much, but that I wouldn't want to put it in any more than that. When we come back, we do all the fiddly white work, which is going to make him seem so seahorse, it's going to blow your mind. So we're going to come in and do some dotting. I put some fresh red out and I put some fresh fluid white out. And I've got my one, number one monogram liner. And at first I'm going to go ahead and just get my red on here. Kind of load it up. I'm going to make sure I add some dotting of red. I tried pretty hard to paint it randomly. But you do want to have some dotting, not just white dotting, but you'll want to have some red dotting. Seems fussy. But you'll be glad later when you do. Just little random dots of red through those little spotted areas. Rinse out. Begin the mini stars of seahorse, mm. which is a pretty involved little bit. The dotting of the seahorse. Yeah, he has all kinds of little dots on him. Let the, the dotting, dotting, I think, for sure makes it difficult for predators. I'm going to come across the eye. So the eye is there, but it's hidden in the dot. 
it's it's an illusion. Well, no, it's just there. I think they're just trying to be like, it's not here. You haven't found my eye. <laughs> you are incorrect, Predator. You don't know me at all. Look into my eye. But alas, it's over here. Ha 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 ha, I fooled you. That's about how it is. Many, many dots of C4. Most of the dots are fairly small. Mm -hmm. They sometimes come up into the little spiky things. Boy, he just comes together, doesn't he? Yeah. And I have to assume that all the dotting is also part of their camouflage strategy. Oh, I'm sure. No, makes it hard for animals to determine. What's there? This seems like a lot of strategy. I have to think a lot more things used to eat seahorses than just crabs because there's a lot of strategy to hide. Yeah, well, it's a, you know. Or having a single, like, ocean predator. It's a subtle strategy. So some of these are long lines that dash. Oh, yeah. And some are just dots. You've got to just. That's a pretty involved little area of him. Well, you know, give it a minute and really get into it. Yeah. I like the little dots. He has many it's like, dots. It's like uh, seahorse jewelry. He's a bejeweled seahorse for sure. These are my dots of illusion. You cannot see me. I am spotted. It's my many, 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 many eyes. <laughs> Something, right? You do have to just assume that there's some really strong strategy for escape here. I'm sure if you were an oceanographer or a marine biologist, you'd have like, yes, this is a very common thing that happens in sea animals where they get little dots to get speculative highlights and make you not be able to see them in the ocean floor. They didn't count on human predators, though, did they? Who were like, look at all your dots. <laughs> I see your dots. I think that us looking at their dots is the least of their concerns. <laughs> eh, at least we're not drying them and putting them in like seaside shops anymore. Are we? Uh, I don't know. I haven't I'm not been up to the seaside that. since the, like. I don't remember the seaside. I, I don't think. I feel like if we ever get out of the house, we should go live to tell others that we got out. That's where I'm at with all this. My mom is going to be on a cruise before I get out of the house. <laughs> I don't know. We're going to work something out, I think. No, I think her cruise doesn't leave for a little bit. You had to buy it like way ahead. The cruise ship industry is like the crossover between COVID's most attacked, you know, community and the cruise ship industry is very synergistic. So they, they were real careful launching again. When mom told me she was going to cruise again, I was like, oh, I don't know how I feel about that. But, you know, you got to live your life, and I get that. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I do want to go somewhere. I want to walk around somewhere. I have been like... I want to go see... The uh, Atlantic. I'll go see anything. I would go see a can in the road right now. <laughs> up the street. I would go see 
Like I, when we go to the grocery store, I'm like so excited to mask up and leave the house. I'm like, mask it up. Going to go look at pickles, jars and jars of pickles. <sighs> Find myself a saltwater taffy place. <gasps> and eat it in public. <sighs> Post-vaccination fantasies. Post-vaccination fantasies. Well, the thing about being uh, vaccinated and planning to go out is no one else knows you're vaccinated, so you still want to, and also you you don't know about, you know, things like mutation. You'd want to, we still want to be safe. So we've still got a mask and all that. So they say not to, whoever the they is and they. He not pretty. Yeah, he's like a floating little constellation, isn't he? He is. Sparkles. I think I'm gonna put a few more up on his face. Not shiny, he's sparkly. He is super sparkly. The other thing to remember is that their head has some of the dots that actually are outside. The extra special sparkle. Yep. Extra special sparkle. Putting it there everywhere. You want to dot him until you're happy with the dotting. Mm-hmm. Dot him until you're happy with the dotting. That's that's some you dotted some nice dots. I feel happy with his dot. I feel like we painted a seahorse. Do you guys feel like we painted a seahorse? I feel like a seahorse has happened. I think one has happened. I'm gonna go ahead and add a light reflection of my name. Because at this point, that's where I'm at. like one of the light reflections but it's my name so that way it doesn't pull away from the whole composition was that not cool yeah <laughs> all right so we did a seahorse i think we come back and do a rock mm. is next we got a i think we've got a rock that's right we've, we've shore got crab seahorse rock oh okay, then there was a surfer dude was that, there was a crab surfer dude seahorse Rock Shore girls on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is a puzzle. <laughs> so if you're still here with me doing your Curly April, if you're completing all 30 paintings, I want to tell you that that is amazing. You're going to walk away from this program really understanding water on a completely different level. You won't see it the same again, and you won't paint it the same again. And it's going to really fundamentally improve how you paint in seawater. So that's awesome. But if you just came to paint the seahorse, Either way, I want to see y'all's paintings. So be sure to share those on social media and hashtag me in and let me know. Um, Because it's always exciting for me as a teacher to see your artwork. So on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or any of the little Pinterest, any of the places, just share your artwork with me. Take a deep breath. You did a good job. He did a good job being a seahorse. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.